Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Again, Rosa Technocrat here. Today we will be discussing about uh, FortiGuard. Like what is FortiGuard? Uh, how to troubleshoot and fix issues related to FortiGuard? What is the purpose of FortiGuard? And uh, how it affects your uh, environment? So let's go and understand about FortiGuard. So before starting troubleshooting or knowing uh, how to fix any issues with FortiGuard, we need to understand what is FortiGuard. So FortiGuard is a subscription-based service uh, from Fortinet where our FortiGate firewall queries Fortinet servers in real time for various services. And these services are like periodic uh, checking of FortiGate subscription, license validity, web filtering, application control, antivirus, anti-spam, DNS filtering, and so many other databases. And this query is real-time. So FortiGuard basically queries real-time for any databases or web filtering or rating or categories of the web filtering. So these are queried in the real-time from Fortinet servers. And of course, the last periodic signature updates. So any signature updates for IPS or rules or application control, detection of a application. So all these rules are uh, taken from the FortiGuard servers uh, in the cloud. So, uh, okay, don't, let's not talk about now. Let's go to the next slide. So what are the different things that are included as part of FortiGuard subscription services? So FortiGuard subscription contains antivirus, intrusion protection service, application control, anti-spam, web filtering, web application firewall. So this all depends on what license you have. You may have an antivirus license, uh, you may have web filtering license, you may not have an anti-spam license. So it depends on what license is procured by your organization or for your firewall. <clears throat> so depending on the license, the FortiGate uh, con communicates with the FortiGuard servers and then gets the updates for everything. So generally, the most impacting or the most uh, uh, the feature which is affecting us the most is web filtering. So because uh, most of the time or generally we always use the web filtering for the firewall policies and we are blocking websites based on the category of a website. Let's say uh, Google, let's block all search engines and allow everything. Or we say let's block media and streaming but allow other websites. So generally everyone is impacted or affected by the web filtering license or they, they, they always procure the uh, web filtering license. So let's say, and uh, what will be the impact if there is no reachability to FortiGuard? So as I said, the most critical of them is the web filter rating query. So which you generally see the mostly the issue. Because let's say if you don't get an update for the definition updates or IPS updates, so you are not going to be impacted because you are still running with the old version or old version of the database, which might be one or two days old or depending upon since what time you have a uh, reachability issue to FortiGuard. But the major impact will be on the web filter rating query because that is a uh, live query. Whenever you try to browse any website and if you are using web filtering on your firewall policy, then this is going to affect you. And secondly, of course, the updates for application control or categories or spam will not be received if you have issues to the uh, FortiGuard communication. And if because of this, you will only miss latest less updated threads, but whatever you already have in the database, that will not be impacted. So the immediate impact of no reachability to FortiGuard can be seen if you are using the web filtering profiles in your policies. How we can check like, okay, now let us see how we can check what all different licenses you have. So I have uh, given a sample for a left firewall. So this can be seen sometimes even on the dashboard. Uh, if it is not on the dashboard or if you don't have that widget on the dashboard, then uh, you can go to system. Under system, you have option called FortiGuard. So if you click on FortiGuard, you can see here what all licenses you have. 
so you can see firmware and general updates so this is licensed intrusion prevention licensed antivirus is licensed web filtering is licensed industrial db licensed iot detection service is licensed so similarly as this is on my firewall but you may have different licenses depending on your firewall and here you can see like uh, the, it's reachable and from here if you want to do a manual update of the license and all the databases then you can click here on update licenses sorry on update license and definitions now and this page also shows us the reachability status so on this page uh, this is not giving any here at 40 guard updates right so that means there is no communication issue and you can see here like uh, from 40 guard.com it it uh, this was the traffic volume 2.14 mb 40 guard downloaded like whatever it tried to download from 40 guard it is 29 mb so similarly if you have any issues you won't see these uh, downloading and you will also see a error here so if you go to this 40 guard page you will be able to see what all licenses you have and what impact you can have on your environment if the 40 guard is not reachable so basically depending on the license you might miss the updates for this and the most important and critical is the web filtering uh, if you are using it in the uh, firewall policy so i will be explaining you like how this will impact okay so we will see how it will like, impact and how we can fix it so see as i told like we always download the definitions and latest updates from the 40 guard so that can also be verified if you go into the uh, system event so if you go into the system events you will see 40 guard schedule update and log description is 40 guard updated so you see here these are the different kind of databases that are being updated whenever you receive an update or whenever there is an a update at 40 gate or, or 40 guard uh, servers so you can see like virus db uh, exdb etdb ids ids signatures database ids url database dns bot goip the location for goip ffdb map these are different databases that are being updated uh, if you have a license from 40 guard or if you have license from 40 net for this so this can be verified by going into the system events like whenever there is a 40 gate updated you will see an event and even if there is an issue with the reachable uh, reachability you will see an event like 40 guard uh, update failed because of reachability or because of no reachability to 40 guard so you will be seeing uh, any event logs related to that then okay then uh, first thing is all database will get updated signature virus dns db all these database gets updated and the second most or the first most important is the web filtering so uh, how to troubleshoot 40 guard connection issues or how to identify 40 guard connection issues uh, before that let me tell you yeah let me tell you the impact of web filtering reachability also so let's say you don't have a uh, reachability to 40 guard then if you try to browse a website let's say google.com i try to browse but i see web page is blocked and an error occurred while trying to read the website using the web filtering service so what the browser did whenever you are trying to browse the google.com the 40 gate checks with 40 guard for the category of this website whichever you are trying and if uh, 40 gate is not able to reach to the 40 guard it will not be able to know what category the website belongs to and in that case it is going to give an error that web filtering service error rating timeout and your browsing will not be successful so this will create a lot of mess and issues in production if you start seeing this because of uh, 40 guard reachability issues and as i saw uh, like uh, earlier i had shown like everything was fine now here if you see because i have a 40 guard uh, connectivity issue so you can see here unable to connect to 40 guard servers so and you see here 40 guard download and 40 guard query it's showing as down because the 40 guard servers are not reachable uh, let me show you the impact of no reachability let me try to open up it's been up a uh, vm uh, one second okay 
I have my lab device here. So if I am trying to browse google.com, what it's giving? It's giving an error occurred while trying to read the website using the web filtering service. And why this is getting blocked? So there are workarounds for this. Let's say you are not able to fix this issue. So the workaround can be you can remove the web filtering policy from the profile. Uh, I mean profile from the policy. Let's uh, let me show you the example. Okay. So this is my lab firewall, and if I go to my policies, you can see I have a uh, just simple a rule uh, going towards the internet, and I am applying that web filtering profile default. And if I check my security profile for web filtering. Uh, I am showing you like how it impacts, okay. So you can see the web profile is always based on the categories of the website. You are having uh, the profile, let's say, to allow or block hacking or illegal. So how does the FortiGate knows that this website is belonging to uh, illegal or unethical or which category? So FortiGate does not have any local database or it does not detect the category of a website locally. So what it does, it communicates to the FortiGuard servers and then gets the category of that website. So if you try to browse, let's say, if you want to know the uh, category of a website even without FortiGate or like say you want to create a rule uh, by knowing the category. So you can do a you can simple do 40 guard website lookup okay so there is a website called 40 guard web filter okay so similarly 40 gate also tries to communicate to um, 40 guard to find the category let's say you want to see google.com so the category of this website is search engines and portals let's say gmail.com the category is web-based email and let's say our domain, our website, the Rosa Techie, if you say, it will say information technology, right? So this is how the FortiGate also retrieves the uh, category of the website you are trying to. So uh, let's say now as a workaround, one of the, uh, I will tell you one of the workarounds for this let's say in the firewall if i go in the firewall policy and i remove the web filter profile one of the example if i remove let's say i remove or i disable the web filter profile and click ok so that means now i am not blocking any website based on the web filter so if i try to browse my website now you will see i was able to uh, open the website or if you open let's say indiatimes.com anything any website now I'm able to open it right so because now I'm not blocking anything uh, based on the web filter and if I apply my web filter again if I apply my web filter again the default one and click OK and again if I try to browse let's say google.com what happens let us see what happens for google.com it is not able to open it can't open the website or it will throw the error like uh, it's basically it's trying to look up the category of this website like what category this website is belonging and it will not be able to browse it because it uh, our FortiGate is having a uh, connectivity issue to the FortiGuard and it's not able to let me click so this this is an error it's giving because of the certificate I will fix it but you are not able to browse google.com because I had shown the rating error occurred so that is one of the major impact when your FortiGate is not able to reach the FortiGuard servers let's go back to our PPT 
So this is I had shown like if your firewall is not able to reach to the footy guard, your websites may be blocked. Because you, you, you have a connectivity issue to the uh, footy guard. Now let's, uh, before f fixing that, <coughs> let me tell you the configuration of footy guard. <coughs> So by default, if you if you see under the FortiGate, by default, this is the configuration for FortiGuard. So what it does, it it uh, the FortiGate schedule updates are downloaded every two hours. You can see from the configuration. Uh, I will recommend to keep it daily, uh, somewhere at midnight, because every two hours downloading may not be that uh, efficient and will be just wasting our resources onto this. So I, I, I always say like you can keep it daily uh, somewhere uh, around midnight or whenever you have a least traffic. Then we have a web filter case like let's say you try to query a website or you try to do a uh, web lookup for a website google.com the category. So FortiGate can query, uh, keep this in the category of the website in the case for uh, 60 minutes and you can increase this time out to one hour or something or less than that so the the more you reduce the security will get uh, security will be decreased because you are casing it at the same time the category of that website may change <coughs> similarly for email filter case also you can increase uh, the case time out so by default the 48 saves uh, the category of the website into the cache for 60 minutes and this is filtering service availability so if your website or if your FortiGuard is having a web filtering reachability issue to the FortiGuard you will see here uh, the web filtering reachability is down so this is the default configuration of a FortiGuard and that can be changed if you change it from here uh, or from CLI as I already explained on the uh, lab device, like this is, these are the different categories and these are queried in live. So that's why FortiGuard communication is also important to fetch their categories which website belongs to. As I had shown, <coughs> you can go to FortiGuard.com web filter and you will be able to uh, know the category of any website whether it is uh, this is also useful in cases where uh, a user is reporting that I am trying to browse a particular website and it's always getting blocked but uh, you have allowed that or let's say you don't know which category it belongs to because you, user has not provided you with the category that he is getting so in that case you can use this to know the category of a website And also this can be useful if you want to block a website. Let's say you want to block particular few websites and or the entire category that website belongs to. So you can know the category from this web filter lookup and then you can block that category into the FortiGate web filter profile. As again I try to do a lookup for rosatechy.com and the category is information technology and here you can see like when the category was last updated it was updated on august 29 2021 so it also tells like based on the last update when this category of this website was updated so it belongs to category information technology and general interest business okay now let's start with troubleshooting of the uh, 40 guard connectivity so okay so if when we are starting on the troubleshooting the most important thing is uh, to communicate with FortiGuard FortiGate uses these three different no names to communicate to so uh, these different names are service.fortiGuard.net update.fortiGuard.net and guard.fortiGuard so all the services which we were talking about web filter and spam uh, updates everything is from one of these places so first thing we should check is whether these domains are resolvable from the uh, are resolvable from the 48 so let's try to do it on our live firewall let's say what I will do I will do uh, execute ping let me make the screen bigger 
I will try to do a execute ping. So in 48 all commands, whenever you want to initiate a ping, it is like execute ping. And we have got service.fortigar.net. Service.fortigar.net. It says unable to resolve host name. Unable to resolve host name. Right. And then we have exec ping update.fortigar.net. Update.fortigar.net. Unable to resolve host name. Oh. Why? I don't know why. Up. Uh, maybe I'm typing something wrong. Update. Update.fortigar.net. Oh, at least this is this is resolvable, but it's not reachable. You can see it's resolvable, but it can't be reached or I'm not able to ping it. So this I, I have the issue. Then guard.fortinet.com exit ping guard.fortinet.net. Yep, this this is reachable. Okay. So that means my website update.fortigar.net is not reachable. This is important for FortiGuard. Okay. And the first one I tried was service.fortigar.net. Okay. This is not reachable. So that means uh, my problem is because I'm not able to reach update.fortigar.net. I'm not able to reach. Okay. This is the first problem. Then the further details can be seen by using diag debug rating so if you see a diag debug rating if you i mean if you run the command diag debug rating you will be able to see more details related to oh, the same screen which i had shown earlier this so here you can see it had the issue and it's not able to communicate but if you want to see what ip addresses it's trying to communicate or what is the issue let's we are from the CLI you can use this diag debug rating command so if you use diag debug rating it gives all the outputs related to FortiGuard uh, let me explain this command so diag debug rating is helpful in troubleshooting FortiGuard communication issues and to know what could be the possible cause before this you should always check whether the Fort the guard websites or the domains are reachable that is like update.fortigar.net and if it's reachable then we should come to the second step of diag debug rating now when i run diag debug rating it says local english that means the communication language for uh, all these licenses is english service web filter that means i have a license for the web filter and it's enabled service anti-spam it's a disabled feature and i'm not using it virus outbreak pre prevention it's disabled and i'm not using it okay then it's coming like the when it try to resolve the fortigard servers it discovers three servers it means uh, as part of the name lookup from the fortigate to fortigard servers there were three ip addresses in the uh, DNS uh, response so it shows like three servers for the FortiGuard are listed the protocol it uses to communicate to the FortiGuard servers is HTTPS and on port 443 any cast is enabled and these are the default servers which are provided because you can even specify custom servers if you know some other IP addresses you can specify those servers as well now le let's talk about issue how we will identify the issue so because it says number of three servers are in dns response so these are the three different servers so first column lists the ip address of the server that it's trying to communicate to okay second column tells us the weight like which will be the preferred server third is the rtt means round trip time so which server is uh, having the less rtt so less rtt means uh, least uh, uh, response or like the nearest one so if you have a server which is having a rtt of let's say 100 and whereas other is 80 so 80 will be the preferred server 
and this flag is the important thing that explains us the issue so here you can see there are different flags so flag f means failed means this server is failed it's not able to communicate to this server okay this server is also not reachable it's failed this server is also not reachable because it's failed so f the flag f represents failed flag d is like where it uh, directed the communication or where it started uh, means it's uh, resolvable d is whenever the ip address is resolvable that is d and i is like initiate initiate so it is this server is the one where it tried to initiate the connection <coughs> Then we have TZ. TZ is time zone. So it also uses time zone to figure out the nearest server to us. Let's say you are in India or you are in UAE. So for uh, India, the time zone is plus 530, GMT plus 530. And for UAE, the time zone is GMT plus 4. So if you have a server which is in uh, India time zone, then the India time zone server will be preferred rather than a UAE or Dubai time zone server. Then we have packets, means how many packets this FortiGate tried to send to the Forti this particular server and how many are lost. So if you see here, it tried to send 149 packets and lost packet is 146 and total lost is 146. So it's not able to communicate to the server and the packets are being lost. Similarly here, the all the packets are lost and all the packets are lost. So that means there is a uh, no response. So the, these packets are being lost. So you can see uh, this is the issue here. Like you don't have a connectivity to these servers. Now let me go back to the PPT and explain this more. Okay. So as I had explained these this, uh, first three things, this tells you about the license and the status of the service. Then this explains the number of three uh, servers that are retrieved as part of the DNS response. And based on this output, we can see and the third server is not reachable because that is the IPv6. And I don't have a connectivity to IPv6 from my network. And these two servers are reachable. So uh, on the lab, I had explained like all the servers were not reachable, but in my PPT, I have used uh, like different flags. So you can see here, F, the flag F is only on the third server, not on the first and second, because first and second are reachable, whereas the third server is failed. That's why we have a F on there. And if you see here, packet sent are 465 and lost is zero. And the update time is, this was the last update time which when it communicated or when it updated something from these servers. So these flags actually tells us about the issue and the number of packet lost. So as explained, this is the, as explained, this is the server list. First explains the IP, wait, third is the RTT. And the server at the top will be the preferred server because uh, you if you see the RTT, so when you have multiple servers uh, as a response, uh, it will put the server with the least RTT at the top. So it will you will always see the least RTT server on the top. How it calculates the RTT or how it so what it does whenever a packet is lost and there is no response in the next two seconds it will be sent to the next server. So let's say on the first server, he sent the request, but it's not responding and not responding in two seconds. Then it will try to send the packet to the next server. And similarly, so the top position in the list is selected based on RTT, while the other list positions are based on the weight. Okay. So this is how it explains about the server list. I had told you the flags. So flags are important to understand the issue. F is for failed or bad, D is like this server was successfully resolved from FQD and to its IP address. I is the server to which it tries to initiate connection most frequently. 
most frequently goes with D because D will always be there because it resolves the IP address, uh, resolve the name. And T was found whenever it's timed out, like it saw some response, but it timed out. But you will not generally see T because that's for a very short time. And TZ is time, it's a time zone uh, indicator, as I told you. Okay. Now, uh, this command, in the same command, direct debug rating, if you add one, if you add one, it creates a loop of this command to see the difference or like what is actually happening here. So if you go on to our lab device, uh, earlier I had run diag debug rating. So the output is constant. It gives the output one time. And if I do diag debug rating and one, so this, it will keep on repeating the server list. Why? Because we want to see uh, the actual issue or we want to try to see when the issue occurs. Let's say if it is a random issue, you can see here, it trying to send packet 302, 302, then it again tries to send here two more packets were added. See, these numbers are increasing because FortiGate is trying to send more packets. So this output is like a continuous output to see uh, if it is an intermittent issue. So you can just press Q and this output will stop. So you can do a direct, direct debug rating one to continuously run this output and see what is the difference. Like you can see here, uh, initially it started tries to send uh, 304 packets then the counters are increasing look 304 305 here 305 then you have 304 so it gives output for each each like each second after every second it is going to give you output of this to see to see the counters increasing and which helps us to troubleshoot the issue so coming back to the ppt uh, so this explains us about uh, you can, uh, the different uh, server list values with RTT flex. So this helps us in troubleshooting the connectivity issue. So what we understood till now is like uh, uh, impact of FortiGuard not reaching, how the how it can affect the web filter. So the most severe impact because of the FortiGuard reachability is on the web filter. Yeah, I ha there was one more workaround which I want to show you here. Let's say in you, you go to security profiles and under web filter, there is an option here which says allow website when rating error occurs. Okay, this workaround can also help you during such issues. Let's say uh, if you enable this okay and click ok and i have a connectivity issue to this as you have seen like i was not able to browse earlier because i have a connectivity issue to the 40 yard so now if i try to browse google.com it should allow me yes so now the website opened why because i told fortigate even in case whenever there is a website rating issue or if if you are not able to categorize the website please allow it so uh, this is allowed okay uh, as i have shown you all the issues now now let's try to figure out what is the issue in my lab okay because you can see there is an issue but now let us see what is the issue in my lab okay now let's check why why i am not able to reach okay so first as you can see the server IP address is this. Let me try to see for me if this server is reachable or not. Execute ping 173.243.142.16. Yeah, you can see I'm not able to reach this server. It's not pinging, right? Let us see the routing. Diag debug. Oh, I'm sorry. Get router info. Routing table details. Our routing table details and I will see what is my routing for this IP address 243.142.16. So it says uh, directly connected via this. Uh, okay, but I think for me all my internet goes out via port 1, uh, sorry port 2. So I see there is a routing issue here. So because to create this issue I had purposely created uh, this issue. So if I check my route config router static and so 
so i had a uh, default route basically earlier but i purposely created this particular route to make this issue so i will say i will update this routing edit for set destination 000 okay and and i will say set device port 2 so now i have removed so now if i do execute ping yep so my fortigard server is now reachable so now if i again do diag debug rating we should see a communication here soon let us keep it this way or let me try to browse a website again google.com or facebook.com i think i created a mess oh why let me check in the gui these are the routes i have it already says internet a port 1 ah but it says gateway ip i mentioned wrongly i'm sorry for this so let me delete my route and we only have now a default route which is pointing to this gateway and the port so now if i see it should go away very soon yep so now you can see current lost is zero so now there are no more losses here and let me go to the gui and see uh, 40 guard yep so our issue has been gone now you don't see here the red bar which red bar which was coming like 40 guard communication issues and if you go on to the cli also you, you see i am not getting any more losses to this so it it will be updated soon yep so now you can see now you have the reachability and there are no current losses and both the servers current lost has been updated to zero earlier the packets were being lost and this lost is the past any losses any packet losses in the past will show here but current losses will be the current so now uh, we were able to fix our issue we know what is 40 guard how to fix the issues how to trouble shoot the issues related to 40 guard and how it can impact us okay uh the, i i can have uh, or i can talk so much on 40 guard furthermore there are many more commands for 40 guard and something we have diag uh, or diag auto update version so that tells us about like what is the current version of the database which you are using the ip geo database certificate bundle all this so this all gets updated from the 40 guard but i will be talking uh, about all uh, further things in my second video so for now i uh, hope uh, this will be uh, helpful for you to understand and fix issues related to 40 guard connectivity issues uh, thank you everyone thank you so much uh thank you so much and if you like my video or if you think i am uh, helping you i'm uh, with uh, proper videos then please uh, do like and subscribe my channel thank you everyone thank you